So today I want to talk about buying used vehicles because I've bought quite a few used vehicles in my time and I want to share with you some of the things that I've learned to avoid buying a lemon. I'll also give you some tips on how to find out how much a van's worth so that you can avoid paying over the odds for them. And talking of paying over the odds, there's a link in the description for when you do get your van on how to keep a lid on the cost of converting them. So check that out. Anyway, let's get on with the video. Now, the first one is the dreaded VAT. I'm not entirely sure how it works in other countries, but in this country, if you're a commercial van seller, and you're VAT registered, you have got to charge VAT on top of the asking price, which is a whopping 20%. Now, occasionally you get van sellers who aren't VAT registered and don't have to charge the 20%. And believe you me, if they're selling a van where they don't have to charge VAT, they will make you know about it in the advert. So look out for those adverts, because that can save you hundreds of pounds. Service history. Make sure your van's got some sort of service history. Modern diesels will do quarter of a million miles with no trouble at all, as long as they've been serviced at regular intervals. It doesn't matter if it's a main dealer or if it's just a bloke down the road. So long as it's got something in there to say that it's been serviced at regular intervals and had the filters changed, you'll be all right. Tip three. Get over to Amazon and get yourself an OB2 scanner. I think I'm right in saying that all vehicles af manufactured after 1996 came with an OBD2 port. You might have to Google it for the particular van that you're looking at. But these scanners, they're only about 20 quid. I've put a link in the description to them. And if you plug them in, turn the ignition on, it'll tell you about any engine fault codes. And it's 20 quid that could easily pay for itself if you're looking at a bit of a lemon. Right. Let's go for a walk. Yeah, let's go for a walk. <laughs> so, tip number four, check your tires. They should have an even wear pattern across the width of them. If they haven't, it could mean you've got suspension troubles or tracking troubles, and it could be expensive. Also, if you've not got a lot of mileage left on all four tyres, you could have a bill north of 500 quid. So that is a good bargaining chip when it comes to negotiating a price for your van. Number five. I don't know what it's like in other countries, but here in the UK, we've got a load of vehicle checking websites where you just put the number plate in, pay a small fee, it'll tell you some really useful stuff, like how many previous owners there's been, whether it's got outstanding finance, whether it's been reported stolen or even written off, all sorts of useful stuff like that, and they can save you an arm and a leg. I've used them to buy several vehicles, and it just gives you that little bit of peace of mind when you're forking out a lot of money on a used vehicle. Right, where are we at? number six I think. So number six, be realistic about the size of van that you want, particularly if it's your primary form of transport. Because as nice as a long wheelbase sprinter is, you try parking it in a city centre. It is a nightmare. All right, if you're a van life and permanently living in your van, then space is a real priority. Just be honest with yourself, what are you going to use it for? Because if you're just going to use it for odd days out and weekends, and it's going to be your primary form of transport, you'd be better off with something like this or the VW Transporter, which can both get under a two meter barrier, which is often the height of a multi-story car park. Right, so you've decided on your van, but how much is it worth? Well, one good way I've found of uh, figuring that out is go onto eBay, put in your criteria for your van, and then just click completed listings, and eBay will show you all the winning bids on vans of that criteria. And it gives you a good ballpark figure to figure out where to start from. Right, so we now know what van we want, we've got a rough idea of what it's worth, and we've found one to go and have a look at. 
So first thing we want to do is get under the bonnet and have a ferret around under there. Take the dipstick out, check the oil level. It doesn't matter too much if it's black like this, just so long as it's not over full or under full, because that's where the damage can happen. Next, move on to your oil filler cap. Take it off, have a look inside it. It should be nice and clean like this one. What you don't want to see is any white residue, because if you've got white residue, it means that oil has mixed with water, which probably means a blown head gasket, and you want to walk away. And while you're under here, check all your fluid levels, like your brake coolant, your engine coolant, uh, power steering fluids, those kind of things. Next, we'll move on to the brakes. Check for wear on the brake disc. You don't want too much of a lip on this edge because it could mean they're overworn and they might need replacing. Then stick your phone in, take a photo of the brake pads. You should be able to just about see the top edge of the brake pads, see how much meat's left on those. Then jump inside the van, turn all the switches on and off, make sure everything works, like the air conditioning, the fan, the electric windows and all that good stuff. Then you'll need to take it for a test drive and you're just listening for things like when you brake is it pulling to one side or the other is there any unusual noises under heavy braking or acceleration and is anything funny happening when you're cornering any unusual vibrations or noises and now to my last point and this is the most important one never ever 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 under any circumstances give anybody any money until you've seen them and seen the van I know it sounds a bit of a no-brainer, but you'll be surprised at the amount of stories I've heard of people that have done that. And the scam goes something like this. Ninety percent of the time in these scams, the van doesn't even exist, or they've ripped it off the internet from the eBay or Auto Trader. So when you check it out, it all checks out. What they're doing is playing on your fear of missing out and your desire to trust somebody more than you ordinarily would because they've got something you want. Nobody who's selling a van will ever ask you for any money without seeing it. They want to sell the van just as much as you want to buy it, so they're not going to make any unreasonable requests. So never ever. Get it always makes me want to put my head in my hands when I hear these stories. Just don't do it. <laughs> if it's too good to be true, it probably is. So there we go. That's everything I know about buying used vehicles. Hope you find it helpful. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to click on the link in the description about my tips for keeping a lid on the spending on your van conversion. And I'll see you next time. Bye.